Hallelujah, hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. And I hope everyone's having a beautiful, blessed day today, because every day is a day to be thankful. Because the Lord woke you up today, my brothers and sisters. He breathed life inside of you today. He gave you another chance, and he gave you another opportunity to do something different, to do something amazing, to do something good in your life, the gift that he blessed you with. Use that gift, my brothers and sisters, because a lot of people was not able to wake up today. A lot of people not able to do the things that you were able to do today. A lot of people not able to say the things that you can say today. When I say today is a day to be in the, to be in the presence of the Lord, it's always a good day to be in his presence. Because when you're in his presence, that's where he is moving in your life. That's when you're able to hear what our Heavenly Father God wants you to hear. That's when you're able to see whatever it is he needs you to see and understand it. That's why God is good all the time and all the time God is good. That's why each and every day when he gives me another, a chance, another day in life, I first thing I do is get on my knees and say, thank you, Jesus. That's me opening my heart. That's me inviting him in into my life my home, my prayer closet room, and everything that's on my mind, whatever it is in my heart, I'm going to express all my feelings to him. Because at the end of the day, there's nobody care for me that love me more than he does. First Peter 5 and 7 tell us that. That's why I've always encouraged my brothers and sisters that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, hallelujah. He still sits on the throne. He still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Yes, he is. And if you have not welcomed Jesus into your home today, not welcome into your prayer class room today, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. What are you waiting on, my brothers and sisters? He's waiting on you. He's available. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, and give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing in our life right now today, Father God. We thank you, Father God, how you guide us and directed us. We thank you, Father God, how you order our steps. We thank you, Father God, that we're always able to talk to you about every anything, Father God. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love that you have for us. We thank you, Father God, for your patience, Father God, that you have for us, Father God. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we're about to receive today. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message today. That's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no place, Heavenly Father God, that I'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, thanking you, praising you, and glorifying and magnifying your holy name, Father God, because you are awesome, you are mighty, you are amazing, Father God. Oh, Father God, you are our everything, Father God. Oh, Father God, you are a redeemer, you are a healer, you are a provider, you are a protector, Father God. You are Jehovah Jireh, you are Jehovah Nisi, Father God. Father God, this is your time, this is your moment. God, I know for a fact that you're about to show up, that you're about to show out. Let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out, and you should not return back void today, Father God. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your angels to join me in praise and worship today, Father God, in this place right now today. Heavenly Father God, I believe and I declare and I decree right now today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today. Someone is tired of living in darkness. Someone is tired of hiding. Someone is tired of running. Someone is tired of going through the same thing over and over again. And they want to know what the true word is about. They want to know what their light really is about, how that light is going to move to them. And Father God, the angels are already rejoicing in heaven right now today, Father God, because it's already done right now. And you will, you should get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory for God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. 
Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you are welcome right now. You are invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now. Right here in your sanctuary right now. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform right now. Right here in my brother's homes. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today to fill us up more with the Holy Spirit right now today, Jesus. Because we want more of you and less of ourselves. Continue to fill our cup up, Father God, that it continue to overflow. Continue to know I hear from the bottom of my head to the bottom of my feet, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, to do a new thing in my brother and sister's life. I'm asking you, Father God, to reveal yourself to my brother and sisters. I'm asking you, Father God, to soften our heart right now today, Father God. Quiet our minds so we hear from you right now today, Father God, because we are depending on you today, Jesus. We are relying on you right now today, Jesus. And Father God, we are expecting you to do something and move on our behalf right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, it's not too hard and it's not too difficult for you, God. Father God, we trust you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now. Right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel, right here on my platform. Right here in my sister's homes, right here in my sister's life. Right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now because you are confident. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to, to move through this place like you never moved before. I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now so we hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never moved before. Last cast the Holy Ghost fire the sermon through this sermon right now today. Father God, please forgive us for our sins. Known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Father God, words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, and how blessed I am to pray, praise, and have fellowship with all my brothers and sisters today, Father God. In your house today, in your sanctuary today, Father God, as one body in Christ. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we're available for praise, that we're available for service, that we're available for the kingdom. But most of all, Jesus, that we're available for you. You hear me, Father God, before I get started? It's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to take out really feeling about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I call upon your name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't I can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now today that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. My brothers and sisters, sometimes you can't listen to what everybody's telling you because everybody's advice that's not good advice. And based on what I'm saying, how in the world will I be able to listen to somebody when they ain't got nothing going on for themselves? Why would I listen to somebody when they ain't doing nothing in their life? Why would I listen to somebody when they don't want nothing out of life themselves? I'd be wasting my time listening to a person like that. But a lot of y'all right now today, Death is exactly what y'all doing. Y'all are listening to the wrong people who ain't got nothing better to tell you, nothing better to offer you, and they ain't got nothing going for themselves. How can they give you advice when their life is in a messed up situation themselves? How can they give you advice about a relationship when they're not even a relationship? How can they give you advice about business when they ain't never thought about going into business? How can they give you advice about your children when they children cussing them out? How can they give you advice about a job when they can't even hold a job for less than 90 days? How can they tell you about advice about marriage when they ain't never been married before? How can they tell you about advice about so-and-so when all they do is talk about so-and-so? So what kind of advice 
are you listening to, my brothers and sisters? Come on now. That's why a lot of friendships have ended because you listen to the wrong advice. That's why a lot of relationships have ended because you listen to the wrong advice. That's why a lot of marriages have been destroyed and ended because why? You listen to the wrong advice. I'm not listening to nobody who ain't got a bucket to pee in they sell. I'm not going to listen to you. How can you help me when your situation is 10 times worse than what I'm going through? I'd be a fool to sit there and listen to you. Well, you don't even give advice to your own self. You don't even listen to what's going on in your own life. I ain't about to listen to you. I go down and listen to the birds chirp all day long before I listen to you. And that's y'all problem, my brothers and sisters. The first thing I say, oh, they know. Oh, they grown. No, my brothers. Everybody's not grown. You want to become grown when your mentality change. Age does not make you a grown person. I don't know why people think that. Your mentality is what makes you grown. So if their mentality has not changed, so why you still listen to their advice? That don't make sense to me, not does it. And I know she has, I know for a fact it, it don't make sense to you, but y'all didn't see it into what? Everything went south. When that friendship went gone, the first thing you say, oh man, why did I listen to him? Why did I listen to her? If I would just took my time and just ask Jesus, Lord, what should I do? Or ask someone who got, who, who don't went through this situation before, who mean nothing but the best for me who mean nothing but the best for us. Maybe we'll be friends right now. Maybe I still been in a relationship. Maybe I still have my job. Maybe I still be married. But no, I want to be the fool. No, I want to be the idiot to listen to somebody who ain't got a bucket of pee in their own self. I'm the fool to listen to somebody who don't want nothing out of life themselves. I'm the fool. I ended that relationship. I ended that marriage. I ended that friendship. I ended that job. The moment I started listening to people who don't want nothing good for their own self. So at the end of the day, it was it wasn't it was your fault by listening to them. You should have known better. But no. They were too busy all in your ear. Because they didn't want you to be happy. Everybody don't want you to be happy all the time, my brothers and sisters. They go for friends. They go for family members, too. They go for people out of church as well. That's why you got to be careful who you're getting advice from. Your best person that you're going to get advice from is your counselor, which his name is Jesus Christ. That's where you should get your advice from. Or if your parents, they telling you something good, you better listen to them. Because we all have done this. Our parents have told us something about a, certain per about a certain person. And the first thing we said, oh, mom, dad, you don't know what you're talking about. They said, okay, then. When they all go to part, don't come back there and say, oh, you was right. And what happened? The moment when they fall apart, the first thing we hear, right, we hear that voice saying, man, my mom and daddy did tell me this, right? And guess what we got to do? Go back to mom and dad. Mom, dad, you was right. I should have listened to you. Now I ain't got that friend no more. Now I ain't in that relation no more. And they're going to say, but why? Oh, I listened to so-and-so. So-and-so told me he was doing this. So-and-so told me she was doing this. And your parent looked at you and said, you listen to who? Who did you listen to? And you told your parents who you was listening to. They said, hmm, you listen to him? You listen to her? You a fool by listening to them. They don't want nothing. They ain't happy for y'all. Y'all couldn't see that? They wanted their friendship to end. They wanted their relationship to end. They wanted their marriage to end because they weren't happy. But you couldn't see it. They were too busy to signify what was going on in y'all life and y'all business. And they didn't want, want you to know what's going on in their life because why? They had to, they have a bucket to pee in their own self. They had nothing going for themselves. They had no goals. They ain't, they ain't got no, no man. They ain't got no woman. So how can they tell you about a, a goal when well, they ain't got no goal? How can they tell you about a man but well, they can't keep a man for less than 30 days? How can they tell you about a woman but well, they can't even keep a woman no more, than a, no more than 60 days? How can they tell you about a relationship but well, they can't even hold a relationship down? How can they tell you about a job when well, they, they've jumped from job to job to job? 
How can they tell you about a marriage and they ain't never been married before? How can they tell you about something? But no, you want to listen to them because why? They told you they was wrong. Oh, they know everything. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if I was you, I wouldn't do this. If I was you, I, I wouldn't do that. They were setting you up. And you fell for the trap. Everybody's advice is not good advice. And some of you right now today, you learn that right now, right? Somebody right now, you're going through it right now today, right? You are facing it right now. And right now, you say, man, if I can just rewind the hand of time, too late now. That was their whole job to break that up. They saw something good in that. You didn't. But what you did, you avoid not listening to the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit said, uh-uh, don't you do that. But no, you won't listen to so and so anyway. For what? They ain't got nothing to offer you because they ain't got nothing to offer themselves. You think I'm going to listen? Do you actually think I'm going to listen to someone who don't have anything to offer to their own self, but he want to offer you some advice? They only have advice to offer their own children or their own family members, but they want to offer you some advice. Man, you a fool to sit there and listen to that. We really are. And we all have done it before. And when it all went down the drain, the first thing we can say, wow, we did it to ourselves. Right there. Yes, we did. But now, as you got older and wilder, you should know better, right? You should know not to make that what? That mistake uh, can. Amen? Amen. So let's get into this word. We're going to read from the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 11. And then we're going to finish up at 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. If you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. 2 Thessalonians 3, and we're going to read verse 11. If you have it, say hallelujah, we have it. We hear that some among you are idle. They're not busy. They're busy bodies worried about what's going on in your life, your finances, your health, your dream, your business, your relationship, and your marriage. So right then and now, you, that should have been a key to, you know what, I'm not going to listen to your advice. Why? Because we hear that some of y'all among you are idle. I mean, you got too much time in your hand. When a person have that much time in their hand, that means they's looking at you. They looking at what you got. They looking at what you have. They not happy, and they not pleased, and they're jealous because you got it going on. And they gonna find some type of way to destroy that and mess it up because why? They don't have it. They not happy, they ain't got it going on, and they ain't, got, they ain't got the things, or they can't say the thing that you can say or the thing that you have. And when they don't have those things, but the good God Almighty, the gossip going to start running, the lips going to start chirping, and the next thing you know, they're all in your ear and they're all in your head, messing you up, telling you about their friend, telling you about your boyfriend or your girlfriend or fiance or your husband or your wife, and the first thing you do, you get that you get that junk and that clutter all in your head, and you start listening to that lies, you start listening to that mess, and you start listening to that junk, and the first thing they do is say, watch, I'm going to get him, I'm going to get her. If, if I ain't happy, they ain't going to be happy. If I ain't got it going on, they ain't got it going on, they not neither. If you know they ain't got two bugs to pee in, why you listen to them in the first place? Are you finding what I'm saying? They ain't busy. They busy bodies. They mean they signify they being nosy to see what's going on, what they can do. And that's what they did. That's why I say everybody's advice is not good advice. You got to be careful who you're listening to, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to 1 Corinthians 9. And we're going to read verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. We have it. Say hallelujah. We have it. Do you not know that in the race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. If they ain't got nothing, they ain't got nothing for themselves. If they ain't doing it in their life. If they don't want nothing out of life, why in the world would you listen to them? When you running your race, because why? You want somebody in life. You want to better yourself. You want to better yourself so you can be a better provider for you and your family. They don't have that. You want to be a better husband for, for you and your wife and your kids. You want to be a better wife for you and your husband and your family. Well, somebody's not running their own race. Why are you listening to them? They got nothing to offer you at all. 
that's not good advice because they grew up in the hood and they got some age on them. No. They mentality have not changed. If a person mentality have not changed, that means they ain't got two bucks to pee in, so there's no way that I'm going to listen to you. There's no way I'm going to listen to your advice because why? You're not running your own race at all. You're worrying about what somebody that's going on in their race. You are jealous because what somebody that's got going on in their life and you want to be them instead of being yourself. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this word is for today. But someone today or previously have allowed someone who have two buckets, who have a bucket to pee in, y'all allow that person to destroy their friendship, their relationship, their marriage, and their job by listening to people who don't want nothing out of life. And I believe not declare today that God has opened your eyes and he will give you a second chance. And when God gives you a second chance, you got to be careful who you listen to. Because everybody's advice is not good advice. If you ain't doing nothing in your life, I'm not listening to you. If you don't want anything out of life, I'm not listening to you. If you keep up mess, if you keep up drama, I'm not listening to you. If your mentality has not changed or you don't want it to change, there's no way I'm going to listen to you. Are you following what I'm saying right now today? Be careful who you listening to. Don't let that junk and that poison mess your friendship up, your relationship up, or your job up. The point I'm making, Jesus is your counselor. Go to him if you got a problem. Go to him if you want or you need some advice. And if you know the Lord is talking to you, say thank you, Jesus, I need to hear this. And if you like what you heard today, and you know this word is for you, go and hit Jesus' like button. Hit the subscribe button to as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. If you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. And it doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.